um, common oral diseases under oral health. Oral health is very, very much important. That is why it is good to take care of the mouth and its surrounding structures. Now let's look at the common oral diseases. We shall be looking at dental caries, periodontal diseases, oral cancer, halitosis, normal oral trauma, and dental plague. Oral diseases are those diseases affecting the oral cavity. And these diseases, by this definition, means they affect the following structures, the tooth, the gingiva of the gum, the tongue, the palate, lips, salivary glands, and other structures. So these are the diseases that affect all these structures. You know why this is very much important for us to be aware of these diseases so that we can actually identify them and uh, initiate immediate interventions. When there is a uh, oral health problem, it affects nutrition because it, everyone eats through the mouth and when the mouth is affected the nutritional status of the person will invariably be affected too that is why in most of most hiv patients they tend to have nutritional related challenges when, once the, the hiv or AIDS have started affecting the mouth okay so that is one of the important things we should be aware of we, we can be talking about common oral diseases without talking about oral diagnosis because it is the, through this approach we can identify someone who has this condition. So let's define oral diagnosis. We say that oral diagnosis is the act of using scientific knowledge to identify oral diseases processes, to identify oral disease processes and to distinguish one disease from another. Now let's quickly look at the risk factors for the development of oral diseases. One, poor oral hygiene, that is poor brushing of the teeth, poor dental flush and all that. Then unhygienic diets, that's eating of more of sugary foods. Then tobacco use and uh, harmful alcohol use. So these are the risk factors that may lead to oral diseases. Now let's talk about dental caries. Dental caries is a microbial disease. It's a bacterial or let's say it is a microbial disease of the calcified tissue of the teeth that is characterized by demineralization of the inorganic portion and destruction of the organic substance of the tooth okay so what what, what dental card is all about is that the process starts from an infectious origin. A microorganism is responsible. Okay, a microorganism must be present to help in the actualization of this process. And one of the no notable microorganisms responsible is this microorganism, Streptococcus mutans. This is one of the notable microorganisms. So, dental caries can be defined as an irreversible post eruptive pathological infectious process of external origin involving softening of hard dental tissue as a result of acidic action and proceeding to cavity formation. What is trying to let us know is that dental caries can only occur from infectious origin. Okay, and it can only occur in the person who have who have teeth. If you don't have a tooth, it cannot occur in you. And the problem is an irreversible one. That the process that has taken place is an irreversible one because there is demineralization, that is the destruction of the, the dentine and the, the email, which is the, one of the 
sorry, the enamel, which is one of the hardest structure in the body, through an acidic process. How this happened is that the, the microorganism, this streptococcus mutant, are in a plaque, begin to this, uh, um, act on the on the glucose the person have consumed. And when this begin to act on the glucose food or any carbohydrate food the person have consumed that is still retaining in the teeth, it will now be producing acid. It's acids like lactic acid, and this lactic acid will now bring down the the pH of the oral cavity, and now there will be gradual destruction of the teeth surfaces, which will now lead to cavity formation. There are four major etiologies responsible for this disease one is there must be a teeth that's why you say it's a post eruptive disease process there must be a teeth there must be a teeth it, it cannot occur in a person who doesn't have a teeth so then that teeth must be susceptible like there may be a, a cavity or maybe there's a fissure a breaking part of the teeth or there is a plaque that is here then there is need for a microorganism like this streptococcus mutain, which will be in that plaque. Then there is need for substrate. That substrate must be a glucose or carbohydrate. Then it requires time. So these are the four major causes uh, of this, process, this disease condition. So with time, as there is a teeth and there is a microorganism which will, which will be uh, um, reacting with this substrate or glucose, to produce acidic, the acid will begin to eat up here, eat up these teeth, and from as time goes on, caries will form, or cavity will emerge. All right, and these teeth will have some features that promote plaque retention. Let me repeat it again. For this condition to occur, these four basic factors must be there. One, there must be a tooth that is susceptible. That is, the tooth surface will be susceptible. That is, it can either have pits or fissures, like kind of breaking in the posterior aspect of teeth. Or the teeth has a smooth surface, which will allow food particles, after you have eaten it, to be re to return on the surface of that tooth. Then, secondly, there is need for substrate, and this substrate must be a sugar. Which it can be sugar, it can be any of this following sugar, sorry. Glucose, sucrose, fructose. Okay. Or oh, and another factor is bacteria. There must be presence of this streptococcus mutant or any other bacteria that will now convert the sugar into acids, such as lactic acid through a glyco glycolytic process called fermentation. Then there is need for time. Okay, when, this, when there are both three factors occur together, then with, uh, as time goes on, it will lead to dental caries. We have talked about the four major factors. Other factors also include host factors such as poor oral hygiene. Yes, if you have a teeth, like your teeth, it doesn't have any pits or fissures, any crack on it, then food particles, or even if it has, uh, there's a food particle there. If you take good oral hygiene, brushing, scaling and all that, there will not be substrate, and, and the microbiome will not act on this to produce acid that will increase the pH with time. But time is required. But if you have, if once you eat, you brush very well, dental caries will not occur. So those factors: poor oral hygiene, improper brush brushing, brushing technique. The other factor is systemic factors such as hereditary, pregnancy and lactation. The hormonal aspect of pregnancy and lactation can actually make the teeth to be susceptible to it. Then finally, hereditary. Now let's look at the clinical features, the general clinical features of all dental caries. We have cavity, cavitation in the tooth. If you look at the, that, that particular tooth that's affected, there is a cavity, there is a hole there. Then sensitivity, 
the sensitivity will hap will happen once the tooth uh, uh dentin is affected you know once the tooth dentin is affected because that is uh, and it gets to the pop cavity you know that's nerve endings here once it gets to the nerve endings here it begins to give you pain once i've finished the the enamel it gets to the dentin okay now when it gets to the dentin next is this pop cavity and when it gets to the pop cavity you start to feel pains then the next is halitosis bad mouth breath the person will begin to have bad mouth breath then abscess formation if you look at your screen now you see the abscess in the gum because the root of the tooth have been severely affected now let's look at the types of caries you can find clinically we have the interproximal caries pit and fissure caries root caries recurrent caries nursing bottle caries acute dental caries chronic dental caries and rampant dental caries now let's talk about this interproximal caries this particular type of caries occurs at the proximal site between one teeth and the other it do occur here this one teeth is another teeth you see the caries occurring here occurring by the side okay so that is uh, a type of uh, interproximal caries caused by the side the proximal part of the teeth you can see it on your screen there then then the next is this pit and fissure caries this occurs at the pit of mainly premolars and molars that this place that is used for crushing the food surfaces is where this type of caries this pit and fissure caries occurs at the occlusal what surfaces in this type of i mean the next type of uh, caries is the root caries from the word root caries it actually implies that this type of caries occurs at the root part of the the, the, the tooth and therefore it must have involved the dentin this uh and the pop cavity to uh, to extend to the root part of the teeth it is indeed a chronic type of caries and mostly diagnosed using radiological evidence although you can still identify them when the gum has receded another type is this recurrent caries this type of recurrent caries occurs let's say this teeth has caries and this one did not have anyone but once this one this truth is extracted the caries now go over to the next teeth so that type of caries is known as recurrent caries now let's also talk about the nursing bottle caries from the world nursing bottle caries it actually appears that this type of caries of course in children neonates who who use nursing bottle in bed and which contains milk and other milk formula fruit juice or sweetened water okay and this type of uh, caries is more rampant we are um, there's high rates of uh, honey sweetened pacifiers okay among children the other one is arrested caries this arrested caries is a type of caries whereby there's no longer progression of that uh, caries due to intervention but the caries is still there but it's not what progressing now let's look at acute dental caries from the word acute it has a faster and shorter duration with immediate destruction of both the dentin and the pulp cavity now the chronic uh, dental caries is i mean this one is, this one is opposite to this one it has a slow and progressive destruction of the teeth and you can find that in this type of this root caries is a type of chronic dental caries finally the last one is the rampant type of uh, dental caries it is 
a suddenly appearing widespread and rapidly burrowing type of carries, resulting in early involvement of the pulp and affecting those teeth, and affecting those teeth usually regarded as immune to ordinary de uh, tooth decay. That is to tell you, this type of um, uh, dental caries have some sort of immunological uh, part of it that it tends to affect those teeth that are what resistant to tooth decay. So these are types of dental caries, and the important is so that when you carry out inspection of the patient. You'll be able to say yes. This 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 one is chronic. This one acute. And look at the likely uh, 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 effect. So immediate referral or intervention can be instituted. Now, how can we control dental caries? The following are the ways in which we can control dental caries. One is adequate tooth brushing. When there is adequate tooth brushing, it reduces the number of oral microorganism particularly if the teeth are brushed after each meal okay because through brushing a lot of debits uh, food remnants are removed the next is mouth rinsing the use of mouth wash for the benefit of its action in loosening food debris from the teeth has been suggested as a measure of caries control yes the use of mouth racing helps to loosen adherent substance known as plaque on the tooth surfaces. And when there's plaque, these microorganisms will have ability to grow. So when it's loosened, there will not be dental caries. Then dental floss. Dental floss. Dental floss has been shown to remove plaque from an area, gingival to the contact area on the proximal surface of the teeth. Okay. Then another way is uh chewing gums. This can prevent dental caries by mechanically cleaning the uh, tooth surfaces. All right. The next is um, when there is spit and fissures uh, on the occlusal surface area of surface part of the teeth, sorry, then there is need for refilling. Okay. Then lastly, through dental scaling. And removal, mechanical removal of those are uh, blacky from the teeth. The another method is use of fluorid, fluoridated water. Okay, that's fluoridation of the communal water. This is many important in the community health setting. So when there is uh, 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 access to fluoridated water, it reduces dental caries problem in the general population. It, this also provision of fluoridated uh, paste and mouth rinse can also go a long way in reducing all this dental caries.